Hello tout le monde, c'est Enora22, j'espère que vous allez bien. On se retrouve aujourd'hui pour Bacon Pines, un jeu édité par Follow Traveler et développé par Hiding Spot. Installez-vous confortablement sur votre canapé, votre lit, votre chaise de bureau ou sur vos WC, peu importe. Let's go Ok, donc là, on doit rencontrer Rolo à la cabane dans l'arbre. board finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. <laughs> the clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. <laughs> Toujours cette dame purée, elle s'arrête jamais, hein. On check encore une dernière fois pour voir si on trouve des charmes. Je crois que là on a tout exploré. Je crois pas qu'il y ait quelque chose au café. Non. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. The mayor gave a half-hearted shrug. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> With a glimmer in his eye, Kurt gestured grandly toward the horizon. Il fait ça pour l'amour des graines. <rire> ah ça pour être drôle il est drôle Rolo À me regarder pour la pêche. Je suis pas sûre qu ait... que j'ai un charme en plus. waggled his head with pride. Ah non, me dis pas que je vais faire un test d'infiltration là. falloir viser la... les cibles. Comme je suis nul au tir, ça va être joyeux. Oh, ça va. Ah. 
Mais pourquoi ça marche pas ah. <rire> J'ai quand même pas nul à ce point <rire> Ah bon, quand même Oh non, pas une qui bouge, non Chérie. Ah bah non, ça va Faut croire que je suis moins pire quand ça bouge Sucked in a long breath. Intense. Lola let out a low whistle. Luca shot back a look. <laughs> Il en peut plus lui avec ses aliens. Ah ouais, ça c'est vrai, ça peut pas être sa grand-mère euh, la première fois. Intéressant. Chapter 6 Secret Lair Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. Oh, pure. Je m'y ferai jamais assez coup. On va quand même fouiner avant de descendre. Il y a que les personnes soient assez impatientes. Oui, on arrive Oh là là C'est quoi ces gens pressés, là J'essaie de trouver d'autres jetons. Il n'y a pas le feu au lac, purée
C'est Sherlock Holmes. <rire> Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. Rollo flung open the cabinet with confidence. He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Before he could finish, Luca scrambled up Rolo's back. <rire> J'adore comment il est essoufflé. <rire> the three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. As Beck pulled on one of the teacups, it slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. No. Il n'y a pas ça secret. Trop balèze, trop balèze. Wow. On va pouvoir fouiner. Jam jars. Ah On a un nouveau charm. Il faut que le feu quelque part, mais je sais pas encore où. Rollo casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Ah, pardon. J'ai coupé. Il his lips. Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Okay, il y a de dans la confiture. Rollo slimy note to Luca, and licked his fingers clean. Jam Grum. <laughs> Ok, 
Ok, donc la mamie, elle cache des mots secrets dans les pots de confiture. On se le dit, ça. Punching, punching, punching. Je sais pas s'il y a un succès en lien avec ça, mais punching. Tap, 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 tap. Trop balèze. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Grand-mère est peut-être une tueuse à gage, on sait pas, c'est vrai ça. <rire> Prochaine victime. Ok, c'est super méga intrigant. Moi, je vous le dis. Hein. Each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. I finger through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. Luca nodded. And caress the label with his thumb. Okay, so Alice Papa spiked the doctor. folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. Ok, donc il est en train de mimer d'avoir un monocle. Tout va bien Lolo's finger traced across the page. Attends, moi j'ai un peu de peine à comprendre. Rollo scanned through several more pages. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. Rollo rustled the folder, trying to loose more pages. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca slammed the drawer shut. Eh bah, ben, il est fâché le petit. Hein. On va quand même regarder autre part avant de cliquer sur les trois petits points. Je crois qu'on a fait le tour. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. <rire> Pas faux. Toutes les vieilles cartes ne sont pas des cartes au trésor, mais toutes les cartes au trésor sont de vieilles cartes. 
Rolo carefully traced the path with his finger. He jabbed down at the end point. Gloop. <laughs> Gloop a kind situation. <laughs> Send Gloop the situation. <laughs> <laughs> ok 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 Ils veulent donc faire exploser Le festival Luca looked up from the map Beck flicked off the light and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. Oh, gosh. Qui c'est, qui c'est, qui c'est? The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. <gasps> ça me fait stresser à moi, ça me fait stresser! Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Oh. A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down oh, the stairs. Qui, 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 qui? Oh. The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Rollo shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. It was too late. Rollo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. <laughs> Fleming chicken. With crap. all his weight, <laughs> Rollo tackled the man to the ground. <laughs> Mr. Creepy From Man. From the dark corner, they saw something move. <laughs> Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Oh, c'est monsieur... Ah, monsieur Tolliver. Chapter 7. The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. Still unconscious... Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. Alors, on a mot à choisir et on a chill ou hard. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop ouais, interrogation. Ça on est gentil, nous. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. <coughs> He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. <laughs> Rollo 
Rollo and Beck emerge from hiding to give a timid wave. Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca gestured to the corner. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. <laughs> Tolliver was at the light switch. He punctuated his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Ah, t'es sûr. C'était sûr. Beck darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. Son of a... <laughs> it was too late. Rollo confirmed what they all heard. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. They looked bewildered at each other. Ouais, bah apparemment, de la jouer de route, c'était pas... Top, top. Steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. Oh, non, ça finit comme ça. Well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. Back to the drawing board. Ok, alors, on va regarder ce qu'on peut faire. Alors, on est cette fois-là. On va refaire l'interrogatoire avec un mot différent. They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. Donc là, on va faire le bon Roland flic Rendished et le mauvais flic. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. The chair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. 
With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. <laughs> Can't <commit child. laughs> the doubtful expression on Beck and Luca's faces transformed into awe. <laughs> Rollo, hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall. He slammed the table again. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. Don't have a bouche. Mr. Tolliver was in a daze, now more confused than ever. He shook his head, feeling more and more dizzy. Come <laughs> he Ah! His voice faded to a whisper. <laughs> With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Rollo swung around with a repentant grimace. On est directement à la librairie du coup. Chapter 8 Six feet under, three towns over The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives, messages hidden in jam, dossiers on various town figures, and a corkboard threaded with photos. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in Town Square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. C'est là que ça commence à faire beaucoup de pour une enquête là. Rollo 
Rollo muttered under his breath. <laughs> Beck slammed her finger down on the open page before glancing. Something tickled the back of Luca's mind. Complètement là. Ah là, attends, attends, attends. Ah Donc en fait, il vivrait avec sa grand-mère qui, qui potentiellement n'est pas vraiment sa grand-mère parce qu'apparemment, elle est décédée. Enfin, C'est ce que j'ai compris. C'est vraiment bizarre cette histoire. Moi je vous le dis, hein, moi je vous le dis. Hein. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. Avec la musique, il a changé d'ambiance. He held perfectly still, tempering his breath. And to listen closely. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. I'm refouillé avant, au cas où. Ah oh, purée, il est parti Non Comme il a fait Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Mais... Or maybe Gran knew everything. Oh là 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 là, ça pue Ça pue, ça pue Luca's hungry stomach groaned. Not realizing it, he'd gone the entire day without eating. Rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled a handful into his mouth. He flipped the lid to read the label.
Ça fait un moment qu'on n'a pas été dans le jardin. On va aller voir si on trouve euh, d'autres jetons, mais bon, ça m'étonnerait. Oh purée, elle a disparu elle aussi. Oh là là, ça pue, ça pue, ça pue, ça pue, ça pue. Je vais avoir des problèmes. Je me sens bien. As Luca climbed the final stair, the emotion of the day dragged heavily on him. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. His stride began to falter. He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. Ah oh, purée Il y a des somnifères dans les... dans les pots de confiture. Through numb lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. Grand-mère nous a, nous a filé des somnifères. C'est quoi, elle traîne mon corps là ou Comment ça se passe Chapter 9 a speech to end all speeches. Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? Purée, on a été drogué. Mamie nous a drogué. Heureusement qu'on n'est pas mort, la vache. Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. La petite routine du matin. Fouillage dans toutes les pièces. Allez, cours, Forest, cours <rire> J'ai été drogué <rire> J'étais où hein Ah Nouveau jeton Sly Allez, on court, on y va, on y va, on y va. Oh, plus rien de ces mondes.
Gus cleared his throat and awkwardly loosened his tie. William Kerr bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. He gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack of note cards out from his vest. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. He wiped away a single tear. He thumped the podium to emphasize each word. Mr. Kerr nodded confidently, biting his lip. The crowd was silent, in rapt attention. Mr. Kerr methodically made eye contact with each section of the crowd. His voice began to build to a crescendo. Putain, il est super bon son discours là. The crowd began to look around nervously. Mr. Kerr quickly flicked through his note cards. He raised his hands up to the heavens. Oh, mince! Hey, ils ont gelé à nouveau! moment, a merciless wall of impossibly cold air ripped through the crowd, instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr, this was a fitting way for things to end. On a stage, with an entire town frozen in rapt attention, for the rest... The end. There's that ice again! Whenever I think we're getting... Bah oui, ça fait deux fois qu'on là. Everything. Maybe we should just quit? Maybe you should just close the book, walk away, and never think of me again. No, I... I don't mean that. We got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Please. Ok, alors qu'est-ce qui se propose à nous Là, il nous reste Sly. Et Flight. On va faire un interrogatoire Sly. They'd run the classic good cop, sly cop interrogation. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver. Ah, pardon, c'est un nouveau coupé. Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. 
She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Grand. This was going to be easy. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Beck quickly removed the ropes. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Beck twirled her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. Donc c'est pas mal. Effectivement, cela, ça veut dire rusé sournois. Donc là, elle a été, euh, elle a été efficace là. Beck blinked slowly in disappointment. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. Luca et amazement. Chapeau, ils n'ont jamais trouvé. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient.
Gus looked around nervously. Donc du coup, si on revient un peu en arrière, on comprend mieux pourquoi euh, la grand-maman euh, disait à cette jeune euh, dame qu'ils avaient des intérêts en commun et du coup pourquoi ils sont en train d'investiguer sur l'entreprise de Monsieur Kerr. C'est vrai que c'est bizarre. Eris's cry hung in the air. On juste refouiller encore un peu. Non, on peut pas y aller. Elle, elle lit toujours. Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. Alors, on va refouiller à nouveau. Jamais 203. <rire> on the glass to peek inside. <laughs> Pas si bête que ça, le petit rollo. Pas si bête que ça. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. The 
side of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. Rolo's hands hovered over the field of blinking buttons. <laughs> choisir les boutons au pif en plus. Enfin, il a voulu choisir les boutons au pif. Ah Caca Caca, caca, caca Merveilleux On n'a rien à faire de notre peau. Euh, moi, j'aime ma peau. Hein. <rire> Il gestured toward the strange tubes. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh.
He shook his head wistfully. Nuncree took a menacing step towards the children. Luca began to laugh. The color drained from Nuncrete's face. Nuncreed grabbed Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. J'aurais mis pas quoi là? A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. Celle qui euh, gèle à chaque fois quand elle détruit la source. Chapter 8 The Cold Hard Truth Beck leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera, as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. A burst of wintry air snapped across her face, and she was flung out into the cold. Il y a un endroit froid. Ok, donc il faut qu'on rattrape Monsieur Noon Creed dans un environnement glacé qu'on ne connaît pas.
Ouais. <rire> Il en peut plus avec ses aliens, lui. Okay, donc là on peut aller nulle part. As they rounded the corner to the frozen town square, they spotted Mr. Nungreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nungreed was after. Graham stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Mr. Nuncreed turned back toward the kids, desperation in his eyes. Rollowin back held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Gran, his voice growing louder. Mr. Nuncreen winced with anguish. His voice hardened. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Amid a blur of emotions and memories, Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. Voilà, là, il y a un autre choix à faire. On a que weep. And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. <laughs> She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. Oh la 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 la. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Donc c'est comme ça qu'elle gèle euh, la ville à chaque fois. Oh, c'est triste. Pour qu'elle détruit la source, ça gèle la ville à chaque fois. Sur ce, je vous laisse. N'hésitez pas à vous abonner à ma chaîne YouTube ou à me rejoindre sur mon Twitch. On se retrouve pour la suite. D'ici là, portez-vous bien. À la prochaine. Ciao.